Uh, hello and welcome to Matthew Reads, I guess. So today, I'm talking about a book that I'll be honest, I have no like cutesy way of saying how I found it, other than like, I am a fan of the author Adiba Jai Gerda. Uh, and yeah, today I'm talking about the do's and donuts of love. I feel completely crushed right now. So yeah, the blurb says that Shireen Malik is still reeling from a breakup when she hears that she'll be a contestant on a TV baking competition. As well as the prize money, she hopes that the buzz will bring some attention to her parents' beloved donut shop. But things grow complicated when Shireen learns that her ex-girlfriend Chris is also on the show. But then there's Neve, a fellow contestant who Shireen finds herself quickly growing close to. But then, as the competition heats up, Shireen will have to put her feelings aside if she wants a sweet victory. But yeah, so uh, in the first chapter, Shireen is in bed with a bunch of donuts. Slay. Donuts would not be my choice of snack to be in bed with. I feel, what would I go for? I don't know. Like, I feel like I would go for something smaller than donuts just because I'd be one of those people, I'd either have to like cut the donut into smaller pieces. You know how you can get them donut holes? Maybe they would be better. Either way, Slay, she's reeling from a recent breakup, which is not Slay. Uh, she ends up video calling her bestie, Fatima, who's gone to Bangladesh. I, I say that like it's just casual. She's gone, like, it's a family trip. She's with her family. <laughs> then by the end of the chapter, Shireen has been offered a place on the Junior Irish Baking Show. And then Fatima does also mention she, she knows it's Shireen's dream to, uh, like, have a dessert shop and a cookbook. We love law. Anyway, the second chapter is her more or less mentioning that she's going to be on the show to her parents. And them just basically making sure that she is okay and this is absolutely what she wants. And then, obviously, there's this thing that happens where before, like, they go and film the first episode. I say they, they as if there's more than one people, more than one character. Shireen finds out before she'll be filming the first episode. There's essentially, like, this mixer where she's going to meet, like, all of the other contestants, and where she's going to get paired up with another contestant for the first round, because, like, the first round slash episode is going to be, like, teens, very much RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 1 vibes. But yeah, obviously, because this is a romance book and bestie I love romance, like, she ends up getting teamed up with Chris, because why would she not? It's set up for mess and it's too perfect to not be. Uh, anyway, yeah, I was a big fan of the judges on the show. Like, clearly the name of the actual show, Junior Irish Baking Show, was a play on Great British Bake Off. But, like, all of the judges, they just had, like, terrible, like, puns slash offshoots of, like, the actual judges on Bake Off. Like, one of them was called Padma Bollywood, which is obviously meant to be, like, Paul Hollywood. And then... My pronunciation, I'm going to apologise, will probably butcher it, but it, I think it was, I think it literally was just Mary Cherry, but like the Irish spelling of Mary, which is obviously meant to be like Mary Berry. Uh, anyway, let's briefly talk about the trope of this book, which is like second chance love. Like I realise I do have, what is it, trope talk, but this is going to be a very brief thing. Like I'm mixed on second chance love. Like, for me, it all depends on context. Like, why did the couple break up in the first place? Like, why are they getting a second chance? Like, do I feel like the reason for the breakup is, like, reason enough for me to, you know, root for them and to want for them to get back together, basically? That is my main overarching thing like, when it comes to second chance love. I know that some people are, like, not a fan of it, because they're like, if you're done, you're done. Like, why would you get a second chance? But, I mean, in this book, you do find out that Shireen broke up with Chris, but it was because there was some sort of betrayal from Chris to Shireen involved. And, I mean, obviously, I know it's down to context, because, again, why did they break up? Obviously, I know the betrayal, but, like, what was the betrayal? And, like, was it going to end up just to be, like, a misunderstanding or something? Because, like, I feel like sometimes it is in Second Chance Love. Uh, anyway, now, I love a good competition reality show. Like, it's fair for me to say that RuPaul's Drag Race is probably one of my favourite shows of all times. Literally, in the last episode, I think I mentioned that Vice Versa was my favourite show of all time. 
will I? No, I'm not going to talk about it again. But yeah, anyway, I also love... <laughs> This makes me sound a bit sad. I love going on to, like, Wikipedia and just, like, looking at the tables of, like, results from competition reality shows. Seeing, like, a full table of, like, a full season of results, I don't know, it just looks, it just pleases my brain. That's Gaga, you look so good! But yeah, um, in this book, to actually get back on topic, I did think it was, like, really interesting to see, like, all of the bits and pieces, like, in between actually filming like you see so Shireen she has this like blog that she writes for that's like recipes and stories things like that and like after the first episode she gets like a bunch of new like followers and viewers on her blog that she never had before so there is part of the thing of like she's dealing with all of this new attention that she's getting which obviously it's one that is something that like if you're just a viewer it's something that you never really think about because I'm going to talk about Drag Race again because it's my best frame of reference. Like, I know for most of the, like, iterations of it, I know France doesn't. Some of those might not. But, like, they basically get sequestered, get the phones and all the tech. They basically get cut off from the outside world for the whole time that they're filming. And, like, obviously the competitors, they know vaguely how the competition has gone, like, how well they've done, how far they made it but they don't know how they're going to be perceived or like how they're going to be edited to be perceived. So yeah, that's just like quite an interesting thing for me just in general. I will say it was odd seeing the actual competition in this book itself because it seemed like it was only like five or six episodes in total, which like is really fast. Like, because they, from memory, they went down from like I want to say it was like 25 or... Tw well, it couldn't have been 25 because they had to work in pairs. I think it went from like 24 or 26 down to 12. Then from like 12 to 10. Then 10 to 5. Then 5 to 3. And then like that final 3 was like the final episode slash finale. Like, so when I worked it out in my brain, it couldn't have been more like than like 6 episodes. Which is like Drag Race All Stars 1. Or, like, UK or Canada versus the world season one, like, really short. And I feel like with that, that is barely enough time to, like, get to know the contestants or, like, any of the characters. Well, the characters, it depends. To talk about the characters and competitors, obviously, was I expecting to get to know every single competitor? No. Like, they don't even all get mentioned. And, like, I knew that there was only going to be focus on a few. Like, I was aware of that. There obviously was. Like, the main characters of the competition and the series and the book. And obviously I knew we were going to focus on a few. But, like, to talk about Neve for a second. Like, say, because I do read, like, a lot of romance books, I, like, I am aware of the tropes. So when it came to, like, Neve getting, like, really close to Shireen really quickly, my brain was immediately suspicious of her, like, hmm... So either she's going to be perceived as she's just getting close to her for some kind of advantage, or she's going to, like, get close to Shireen with the purposeful intent of, like, messing her up towards the finale. Because, like, somehow she's figured out that Shireen is, like, a massive threat. <laughs> she figured out that Shireen was the main character. <laughs> But then again, I mean, obviously Shireen was also in the competition with Chris, her ex-girlfriend, so there was also that tea there, and that she was obviously going to get caught in between the two somehow. I will say, you do also find out, like, why, as to why Shireen broke up, and, like, you find out what, like, the betrayal, like, was. And again, not to spoil anything, for me, like, I'm just going to try and talk around it, I can see, like, it definitely was a betrayal. But, like, there are worse things in the world and in life that could have happened. So, like, I wasn't against the idea of the two of them getting back together, like, once we found out, like, what the betrayal actually was. And, I mean, I know I did mention earlier that, like, for me, I feel like with Second Chance Love, it's all down to context, really, isn't it? Because, like, I feel like if they're cheating on each other, then, like... For me, that would be, like, a big no for them to get back together. Because, like, why would you if they cheated once? What's stopping them from doing it again? Uh, anyway, to move on to a different topic. It was nice seeing the characters being actively flawed. I think I'm going to talk about Chris and Shireen again. Like, with them being exes, 
like, the way they spoke to each other was not the nicest, as, to be honest, you wouldn't expect it to be since it was, like, a recent breakup as well. It was, like, some other stuff that say, like, if you were walking by and you'd overhear it, it'd be like, should I be hearing this really? Because it just sounds like they're just, like, arguing with each other. <laughs> However, one thing that I found myself thinking was that I think because of the nature of the book and it being, like, a competition reality show, it was going to be difficult to get to know some of the characters. But, like, even with Chris, there was this one detail that Shireen mentions where Chris was more into, like, video games and art than, like, school. But, like, when that was mentioned, that was, like, more towards the end of the book. And in my head, I was like, why did... Like, I'm aware that the two of them broke up, but they're in this confined environment together. Could that not have been something that we could have, like, found out earlier in the book just to have, like, even gotten to know Chris a bit better? And I mean, I think I only mentioned that because I only noticed it towards the end of the book and I was like, oh, that's something I can mention. But then even then, like, how big of it, how big of a deal could it really have been since I only, like, thought to mention it towards, like, the end of the book in the video, so, um, yeah. But yeah, anyway, that's it. Um, like I say, I enjoyed this book. Like, it was solid. I'm a big fan of competition reality shows, so it was really fun seeing it in the context of a book. Even though I don't actually consume as many, like, competition reality shows as I thought I did. Um, yeah. And to be honest, I'd very much like to read more. Anyway, yeah, let me know. Have you read The Do's and Donuts of Love? Have you read any other Adiba Jai Gerda books? I've read the other two. <laughs> Although, looking at the back, I say the other two, in the back of the book there's one that I didn't even know existed by Adiba Jai Gerda, so that may go onto the reading list. <laughs> but yeah, um, also if there are any books that also do revolve around, what is it? Reality T, not just reality, like reality competition, if there are any of those. I know there's one called The Charm Offensive that I feel like is maybe like a TV star or something. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, uh, that's it. Okay, bye.